Hello everybody, Dad here from Dad and Dax Play Games, and I am going to dub this one the Noob's Guide to 7 Days to Die Alpha 15.2 Build 8. Um, I know with Alpha 16 coming out, the streamers are doing everything, so I know the experimental is coming out just in a couple days. Uh, it actually could be later on this weekend. Today is Friday the 8th, I believe, or the 9th, Friday the 9th. Um, so with the additional hype to the game, I know there's probably going to be some people that are going to pick this up, maybe not necessarily go straight into the experimental. Uh, so I just want to go over some of the basics of this game on how to set yourself up for survival on the first night. So from here, what we're going to do is... So I've already got this one set up. I was just kind of dubbing around with some settings. We're going to delete that and go back new game and I do not want to overwrite my starvation so seven days to die noob guide so single player is just that single player uh, you have survival multiplayer which can be either um, on a server or it can be or it can be on a land connection or it can be somebody from steam can join it or you have creative so we're gonna set this up as single player and we're gonna go over some of the basic settings that I like to use for new players to the game so 18 hour day length that's gonna give you the shortest night possible without editing any of the XML files zombies run when you first start out I highly suggest never run zombies by default will run at nighttime so with 18 hour days they will start running and eat your face quicker at 2200 and they will stop running at 0, 0400 uh, enemy aggression is normal that's fine 24 hour cycle I like to have it 120 minutes such that you get a uh, more time to get set up for that first night loot response fine with 30 days uh, tool belt only highly suggest that for drop on death so that way you keep the stuff that's in your backpack Enemy memory, drop that down to 30 seconds. Gives you a little bit more leeway. Enemy spawning, medium, that's fine. And as you're first starting out, the airdrops eh, can be worth the time. Um, I'd recommend putting mark airdrops on just so you can find them a little bit easier until you understand the mechanic of how to track them. So let me just go over the details real quick. So Nomad is the default setting. 18 hour day length, never run, normal, 120 minute days, tool belt only on drop, um, you can drop everything, backpack only or delete all, that's the hardest setting, so we're going to keep it there, 30 seconds is the lowest enemy memory that you can have, so if you get out of their line of sight, they'll forget about you in 30 seconds. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to hit start. This 7 days to die noobs guide, the name that I put here, the random world generator is going to use that for actually creating the algorithm of how it builds the world. There's two different maps. You have Navis Gain, which is the pre-built map, and then you have Random Gen. I always like to play on Random Gen. So we're going to start this up, and then what it's going to do is it's going to build my map, and then it's going to select a random spawn point in there somewhere. So we're going to come back, because this can take upwards, depending on your computer that you have, this can take a couple minutes or it can be a little bit longer than that so we'll see you guys once we spawn in okay so we spawned in we are in a winter biome this is not gonna be good we're gonna take a quick look around to see what we have so we have a it's either gonna be desert or a plains biome down there uh, I have no idea what's up the hill so the first thing you're gonna want to do is punch grass and use E to pick up objects off the ground. So we need to pick up stones, punch more grass, and then if you have these little twig bushes, you want to punch those. Those will give you three wood per. Pick these up. Now we can hit tab. That will open up our inventory, and we still need one more stone, which we'll grab over here. So the first thing that we want to do per the quest is craft a stone axe. This is going to be our first rudimentary tool. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to set up my toolbar. Stone axe goes over here. Torch. Medical bandage. There's a first aid bandage. So it's a bandage with a little 
heart, uh, plus icon there. That will actually heal you. A regular bandage will just stop your bleeding. That one will actually heal you. So what we're going to do is we're going to come around and pick up more stones, hitting the grass fibers. Because the next thing it wants us to do is craft our first armor. Now these boulders up here, these are good for gathering stone, uh, raw iron, and once they break down from... These have three different layers to them, basically. So once you get through the first layer, it will give you either lead, nitrate, or coal. So we're just going to break this down, see what we get. And we actually didn't get anything out of that other than stone and iron. So it's not, not really a bad thing. At this point, we don't really need nitrate, coal, or lead. Um, that's more... Not really late game, it's more mid game. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to take this boulder all the way down. And I like to have my first couple resources. So my plant fibers, my wood, and my stone on my toolbar such that I can see how much I'm collecting. I want to get up to around 100 to 150 plant fibers, around 1,000 wood, and hopefully a couple hundred stone before I really start crafting too much. So this axe is pretty well trashed. So we're going to select it. We're going to hit scrap. And what we're going to do is we're going to favorite this because we're going to be making a bunch of stone axes. And, oh, we did get nitrate and lead. Nice. Not really needed at this point, but we will keep a hold of it. So we're just going to keep going through this. We don't want to move from this area yet. These things over here, snowberries, don't bother picking them up. They are semi-poisonous. If you have an Xbox controller plugged in, Sometimes your character will just randomly walk around. So I just unplug mine. Now what we're going to do is we are going to find a nice tree to smash. Again, these bushes will give you two to three. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're just going to knock this tree all the way down. And as you can see, we're getting five wood per swing. And once we get down to the very end, you'll notice down to the bottom right hand corner, we get plus 60. So we get a little bit of bonus for when you finish, uh, finish harvesting the resource. Bird's nests are good for feathers and eggs. Do not eat raw eggs. It will make you sick every time. So what we want to do is get out of this snow biome, keeping an eye out for plant fibers, rocks we can pick up, other trees. We've got a rabbit stuck in the grass over there. We're not going to worry about that rabbit. So. As you're gathering resources, you want to just kind of move around, look, keep an ear out, make sure nothing's sneaking up on you. And we don't want to stay in the snow biome. The snow biome has giant lumberjacks that are frozen. They have really high level of hit points for a starting character to be dealing with. So we don't want to deal with them. Now that we got that tree, we're going to move on. Before I get too far, I'm going to craft a new axe because this one, as things degrade in durability, their entity and block damage decrease. I always want to make sure that you scrap the item so that way you get a little bit of the material back. Uh, when you craft it, you need five stones. When you scrap it, you get three stones back. So we're almost out of the snow biome. We do have to be careful uh, because there could be zombies spawning in once you get uh, past a certain distance out of your initial spawn cell or hub or chunk, whatever term you want to use. So we're going to get this last tree. It's been 
just a little bit over an hour and 14 minutes, almost hour and 15 minutes in game. And we've got roughly the amount of plant fibers, wood, and stone that I wanted. I'm about halfway on the stone. Like I said, you're just going to kind of walk around, make sure nothing's sneaking up on you. For wildlife in this game, currently there are deer, pigs, and chickens and rabbits. Oh, and bears. Can't forget about the bears. Now, once you get over into a biome like this and you start seeing the cactus, the cactus can be chopped up for plant fiber. And at the very end of the plant fiber, or very end of the cactus, you will get a yucca fruit. Oh, we got a snowball. Okay. That's cool. So these small ones will give you one yucca at the end of them. There are ones that are larger ones, like three three chunks high, those will give you two to three. So we can see our first point of interest down here, which is a campsite, or uh, point of interest is also referred to as a POI. POIs are areas that you can loot. There will also be zombies around them. These things right here, this is what the stick bushes look like in the prairie biome. We're gonna pick up the corn, we're gonna pick up the goldenrod. The goldenrod is used later in the game, uh, well, not really later in the game, but not necessarily your first night, per se. But uh, once you get set up with being able to food and such, um, you can use that to make goldenrod tea. So I really like these little scrub bushes uh, because they're easy to chop down. They don't take a lot of durability off your tool. And you get a semi-decent amount of wood out of them for your effort. You can just kind of walk around, smack them. These are the ones that I really like. Because once I craft a new stone axe, this one again is trashed. So I'm going to scrap it. One hit, I got 12 wood. So we're just going to scan around. Now that we are semi-safe, we're going to go over to the clothing tab. And we're going to start making our first set of armor. So gloves, hood, pants, shirt. You can queue up four items and shoes. Now the next thing we want to do is click on it and wear. And we're going to need a bunch more feathers than this. So what I'm going to do, now that I have a decent amount of plant fibers, I'm going to take that off. Still want to keep an eye on the stone. We're going to wear that. So I'm just putting this down here so that way I can keep an eye on the amount of feathers that I have. Feathers are going to be used for crafting arrows. The two basic weapons that we're going to be really starting out with are uh, a crude bow and arrow and basically a wooden chunk of stuff that you make into a club. It's a real crude looking club. What we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit more stone. I'm only going to take this down through the first level. I'm not going to take it down through all three levels at this point. So at this point what I'm doing is I'm looking around to see if there's any gravel pathways or a road that I can see. And I'm also, as I'm moving around, I want to make sure that I'm not running too much. Um, I'm in a warmer biome, so if I go to, if I hold B and I go to this, I can see that my temperature is rising. What we want to do is take that off. Take that off. We're going to scrap these back down. Now, I know that it's telling me to craft a club. But what I want to do is I want to craft arrows first. So I'm going to favorite this. And then you can hit this button here. I'm going to take one less than the max so that way my, uh, my one feather stays on my bar. So as I'm crafting arrows, I'm leveling up my weapon smithing skill. Which means that the more that you make, the better quality weapons that you make. For Alpha 15, that is changing in Alpha 16, so just keep in mind on that. I'll redo this once 16 stable comes out and more people are playing that. 
So these ones over here, these are the three high ones that I was talking about. So we'll take this down, and we should get two to three. There we go, we got two. So we got a pig over there. The pig squealed because it bumped into the cactus. You will take damage from those, so don't bump into the cacti. So what we're going to do is we're just going to walk around. These little short ones right here, I hate these things. I trip over them, I damage myself, and then I freak out because I think a zombie's smacking me in the back of the head. I call them landmines. There are actually landmines in the game. Uh, they're in the wasteland biome, which hopefully you don't see the wasteland biome on the first day. The ground looks like destroyed concrete, uh, and you'll see like hubcap textures and stuff in the ground. There's dogs, or zombie dogs. Um, if the weather, like the ambient weather kind of goes, um, it looks like it's all like uh, cloudy and hazy, turn around and get out of that biome. Uh, you're either in a burnt biome, which is easy to identify because there's going to be a whole bunch of burnt trees and stuff. Uh, get out of that biome. And if you see the concrete, the like destroyed concrete stuff for the the, the, uh, the ground, get out of that. Uh, you will you will have a bad time. So what we want to do now is scroll down. We want to make our first club. So I'm gonna favorite some of this stuff. Torch, I like to favorite. Bedroll, uh, we don't want to crap that yet. We want that wood frame, wood bow, and bandage, first aid bandage. That's pretty much what I set up for this. Uh, oh, and shovel. I am going to be using a decent amount of shovels throughout the early game. Anytime that you're in your inventory like this, you can click on the backpack. It will auto sort items. So get that there. And then we're going to take those off, sort, and scrap that, craft the next one. So we have 121 stone, 192, and we have just over 1,000 wood. I'd like to have this one and the third one. Now it wants me to find another nest. So we're going to try to do that. Kind of keeping a little bit of distance over there. We can see that the first zombies have spawned in. As long as we don't get too close, they shouldn't come over to us. Anytime that you want to, you can hit the left control key. And you'll crouch and you'll get like a closed eye icon. Um, if it starts to widen, that means that they're sensing you. Uh, they can sense you based off of noise, sight, and smell. So we're still looking for that next bird's nest. Just kind of walk around, see what you can find. And we have a bird's nest. So you, hold, you hit E to uh, interact with the, uh, the lootable item. Then you can hit R to loot all. What you want to do is arrows. Again, one less than the last one, so that way I can always see how much arrows that I have, or feathers that I have. And now that we have that quest made, we want to craft our first bow. So if we go over to our character, we can see that the temperature is still rising. We want to take off a little bit more clothing. First time that you make a bow, you have to load it. So you want to hit the R key. That will knock the first arrow. Now this, this POI is a tent. It is made out of cloth fragments. Or it's made out of cloth. You, you can break it down to get cloth fragments. Uh, it's not a suitable POI for your first night. Zombies will tear through that in a matter of seconds. We will go over there just to show how the spawn spawns work a little bit. 
we're going to do from here is zoom in with the right mouse button. There is a little bit of ballistic drop. I totally missed that one. Some of the zombies do have some janky hitboxes. You want to aim for the head. If your aim isn't great, aim for the body. So once they drop on the ground, you can loot them. And then what you want to do is chop them up. Or at least chop one of them up. Because what we're going to get out of that is fat, rotten flesh, and bones. The bones go to recipes. You want to make a bone shift. This is going to be your first knife. I don't carry around the rotten flesh. We don't need it at this point. Somebody is coming over to us. I call these guys Twitchy Boy because they just kind of twitch around. So once they get on the ground, you're going to do extra damage to them. Aim for the head. Leather duster. That. If we click on this, this has insulation of plus 30. We do not want to wear that in the biome that we are in. That will definitely overheat us. These cinder blocks can be broken up. They will give you stone. The gravel pathway, you can use a shovel to dig that up. You will get um, you will get stone and sand from. So we want to take this corn. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly walk over here. Keeping the ear out for any zombies that may be walking around. There's ones that will crawl around on their belly. They will kind of hide in the grass. So this is going to be our first lootable structure that we have found. Get the bird's nest. Now what we want to do is go back to our favorites. Arrows, one less than the max. Just do a 360 around here, see what there is. These broken tree stumps can be looted. Usually they have some fairly decent stuff in them. These things can be broken up for more wood. Now we're going to go inside. That is a lootable corpse uh, in Alpha 16. When you see those like that, those are a zombie that's going to get up off the ground and chop your face. So these can be broken down for cloth fragments. So we have our first weapon part. These things actually can be broken down into cloth fragments. Which we will do that for a little bit. Not all of them, because cloth fragments can hit recipes, bandages. We want to start crafting some bandages. So we're approaching uh, about midday. We're actually a little bit, a little bit before midday. Ah, there we go. Ooh, there's a crawler over here somewhere. I can hear you. These guys are a pain in the backside in this build because it's hard to hit them in the head. Scan around. That's a resource node to my right. Each of the different biomes have a predominant ore that you'll see based off of nodes on the ground. Yeah, 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 I hear you over there. So we have seven arrows. Crawlers, you do not want to engage in melee combat because they can hit your legs, uh, break your legs, which is bad. 
So what I want to do at this point is walk around, see if I can find some more bird's nests. Get some feathers, make some more arrows. I don't really want to engage in melee combat at this point. I can if I need to. Yeah, let's do this. So there's two different ways you can do the melee combat semi-effectively. You can run straight at them, smack them as you go by. So basically, you just turn as you're running past them. Or you can go forward and as you hit, sprint back. Melee combat is dependent, or damage in melee combat is dependent on not only the quality of the weapon, but also the amount of stamina that you have. So the blue bar, I missed. As I said, you don't really want to be engaging these guys in melee combat, but I only have that one arrow. It's not fun when they smack your ankles and break your legs. One of the things we can do is they're slow, so we can just actually ignore them. Ignoring the zombies is actually a possibility. Sometimes it's better to... Ah, there's the landmine cactus. So that's going to be our first hardened structure. We're going to make our way over to that. Those are a good source for water. Which, do we have any empty jars? Well, what we can do is we can drink out of this. So we'll see our hydration is 99% right now. We do have one empty jar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the water tower to show you that POI real quick. Not a lot to them. Pick up the goldenrod. Watch out for the cactus. As I run into the cactus. The cactuses can make you bleed, I believe. If you bump into them enough. Okay, so arrows one less than the max. So it's got a lootable trash can, short iron pipe. That is a good find. Short iron pipe is a recipe item for the forge. Now I don't want to fight a melee combat or range combat really on hills like that. Uh, they kind of have the advantage on hills. Don't want to do that. So let's drag her over here to the road. Loaded walkers coming in. Let's get the knife out. Work out some knife skills. Sham sandwiches. Useless at this point. My inventory is full. These guys can be a little bit of a pain. They have a decent amount of hit points for a starting level character. And they have a long reach. My aim is terrible. My aim is still terrible. So, once we take out this nurse, we're going to go in and do an inventory management. So basically what you want to do is as you're sprinting, kind of turn as you're approaching. So I'm going to come in from the right. As I start swinging, I turn so that way I hit. Make sure nothing's around. So we do actually have another building up that way. So from here what we want to do is I'm actually going to wear that. Uh, do, do. 
chairs can be scrapped at this point. It's going to be a while before I need any firearms. So we're going to scrap that. These empty cans we want to keep. These can be filled with water. I'm actually going to use this. I don't need to use it yet. It's going to free up a piece of, free up some inventory. The jar. Actually, I think I can scrap these bandages back down. Yep. Now, so we have some lead scrap. These cotton fire or cotton plants we can make into um, cloth fragments. Sham sandwich, don't care about you. Those can be used later in the game for, I believe it's fertilizer. So there's a backpack up here that we can loot. Uh, pistol barrel, we're going to scrap that. Get some more glass jars. Nothing else is around. Now what we want to do is actually break through one of these. It's been a while since I've done this. I think the water may be at this level. Yep. Yeah, okay, so there's that. Now that we have water flowing out of it, we can take our jars and our cans. Do I want to take my torch off of there? I don't need that right now. Oil, I'm going to get rid of. I'm actually going to eat the chili for one more can. So, with the jar in my inventory, I'm going to right click. That'll fill that up. Oh, I forgot that makes it look like beer. Break you out. And now what we have is four cans of murky water, five bottles of murky water, one thing of clean water. Don't want to drink murky water unless you have uh, vitamins in your inventory such that you can be cured of the dysentery that you're most likely going to get. Basically, it's going to give you the runs. And it's going to be bad. So water physics are a little bit wonky. I should have gone one block up higher than that, but I didn't. And now I'm going to have a constant reminder anytime I'm in this area of my silly noobish mistake. So what we want to do is... Still can't make any more arrows. We can make a new stone axe. Scrap that. The bow we want to scrap. There. Let's make the bow. We're going to scrap the club. Make a new club. So we still have over 1200 wood, over 100 fire or uh, stone, and we have a decent amount of plant fibers. So we are going to want to focus kind of on getting some more stone and stone and feathers. Depending on the biome that you're in, feathers can be a little bit of a trick to get early game. Actually, since I got those extra cans... Oh, I only got one extra can. Okay, not going to worry about that then. I was going to say, since I got extra cans, I was going to go back and get, uh, get more. Nothing there. But one thing I want to do is start making some frames. I'm going to start out with 20 frames. Not really any particular reason behind the 20 frames, it's just the number that I like to do. I like to make them in like 10, 20, 30, 50, depending on how many I need at any given moment. So before we get um, too close to that POI up there, that is a garage. Actually, I want to find one of these in one of my playthroughs. Uh, take one of those over and fortify it. Uh, I 
I've seen some pretty cool designs you can do with the, the uh, with that building. Uh, I've seen somebody take them all the way up to concrete fortified, and they're uh, pretty cool. No, 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 arrows. Oh yeah, I still need feathers. Like I, like I was saying earlier, feathers can be a little bit of a problem in certain biomes. Uh, I know there's probably going to be a decent amount of bird's nests in the uh, snow biome over there. What is that structure? We might go check that out. So these cars that are completely just a frame you can't loot. Uh, ones that are a little bit more complete, you can loot those. So that's a locked door. We're just going to do a 360 around the building. Find the zombies that want to eat our face. Kind of look for some bird's nest as we go. club try to aim for the head if you can yeah cactus so when you get him on the ground you definitely want to smack him a good time a couple good times in the head Now, stamina is getting low, which means the damage I'm doing in melee combat is also getting low. So we're just going to kind of kite these guys around a little bit, get our stamina back, loot her body real quick. Now this is the one that I've done damage to already, so it's going to have less hit points right now than this one over here. No you don't. Oh, that was dangerous. Ah, damn this. Now, this method can be a little bit tricky to hit them. And when you do miss them, you waste uh, stamina. Take the bow out. It's a new bow, so we have to load it. That one's dead. Nothing on that one. Glass jars. Got a decent amount of glass jars right now. Glass jars are easy to make. Uh, probably will check that one out, but what I think I'm going to do is... Uh, stupid cactus. Okay. Let's see if there's anything in here we can scrap down. Do... Actually, gonna scrap down this can. Um, animal fat, we really can't do anything with. Yucca. We'll make some yucca juice. That's a cooling beverage. I'm gonna take this down because if I have to leave the building in a hurry, I'm probably gonna run smack dab into this thing. get into this building real quick and this is kind of going to be an outpost building for us what I want to do is drink this go back to our favorites and the door I did not favorite so we want to craft the door down the door so now we can lock it 
we can fortify it. And we can get ready to loot this place. So the looting will be in the next episode. And fortifying this place for the night will also be in the next episode. So we will see you guys for episode two of the Noob's Guide to Seven Days to Die.